beauty is, you see this in fashion, right? When we were in the 90s, I was a hip hop dude, and I, hip hop culture was not as it is today. And it was growing, and we were in Canada, so there was a delay between New York and wherever I lived in Canada at the time. But there was no inhale as a person who loves hip hop that had ever wear cigarette pants, tight pants. And we would laugh, I had a buddy, and the heavy metal heads, they had tight pants, and we laugh at them because it looked stupid. I had a th- I'm a, I was, let's say at the time, 32 waist. I had 38 waist size pants. I needed to tape my pants with hockey tape to hold the pants so that they can be like super baggy. And I had to wear, a, I had a Dallas Stars jersey on top of it, extra, extra large. So it's like, so it like it, the whole thing looks like a baggy dude, right? And it, it worked, I looked great though. Of course I had Tim boots, you know the deal. Um, open. Your eyes get accustomed to seeing things. So your sense of beauty gets, in a way, I don't want to say controlled or manipulated, but somehow. You see something over and over and over again. What you see starts to trigger certain sensations in your brain and in your nervous system, and certain pathways are created. That's what advertisement does, effective advertisement. It gives you sensory overload with an image, a sound, and they can create, use certain images that are associated to smells so that it creates a tsh, tsh, something in your brain. And now you, you, it's literally, the, that's how you get conditioned. So eventually you start to see that as pretty. You don't see it as pretty, you, you see it and it creates a sensation. And that sensation you associate to arousal, which means it's pretty, or I like it. But that was constructed. But you don't know that, you don't realize that. When I look back, I'm like, well, I know what I was trying to do. And when I see uh, the style from the 90s, well, I still, I'm like, That's, that looked great, that was dope, that was G. Look. But in a way, if you zoom out, you're like, well, you almost look a little ridiculous. So what I'm trying to say is that beauty is beauty, and you can see it in anything, but the world conditions us to see certain things beautiful. You wouldn't imagine in the 70s or 60s that plastic breasts this size or this size could be considered beautiful. You'd laugh at it, you'd stare at it, because it, 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 looks, it looks silly. And I remember when the first time I saw on TV or porn fake breasts that was like odd. There's not an appeal, but it's the association, the, cons- the constant hammering in my nervous system and images and Baywatch and this and that and the bikini models that my friend Sammy had on his wall and this and that, and you just start to create these associations and music and then and then and then, and wet t-shirt contests that are there, right? And it's just, it starts to create links that are connected to your sexual energy, you're aroused, and now you start to like, see it as pretty. Is it pretty or you've been conditioned? Ah, so you, you don't know that you're conditioned. You think that now this is your taste. Until you go through an un, unfucking process where you unwind those things and you start to rediscover what your own personal taste is. This is what I like. You may like fake tits, I don't know who am I to say, but I'm just saying, you don't know that. So the, the concept of beauty, there's some, there, beauty is a reality. And our geeky friends, the scientists who are trying to study the science of beauty want to determine what makes it that we, what is beauty, right? Sh- symmetry. And then you need, uh, like, uh, beauty is what I see, right? So, if you're conditioned to see something all the time as beautiful, then that's what you look for. So, if all, all I saw is this, and that's what I associated as to beauty, then when I, I'm looking for it. And therefore, I won't see another kind of beauty. I'm, I might not see what's actually beautiful. You know what I mean? 
So I won't necessarily see that girl who may be simple. Simple doesn't mean she's ugly or boring. She's just, I'm just simple. She's not flashy. She's not arrogant or invasive. Or cool in the way that cool has been defined by culture. Right? All these things, when you say cool girl, like I see it, I see it like in a little girls walking outside after school, right? Public girls' school. They don't look like themselves. They look like what I've, because I've, I see, what, right? Advertisements everywhere. I'm like, you look like her. It's not the little girl that, quote unquote, I find pretty or attractive or whatever you want. It's that you're, you see, the, in, she looks like the advertisement and you respond to the advertisement that she's wearing. That's the trick. That's how they get you. And you're conditioned to, to see that. So the woman doesn't necessarily, she, she may not even be beautiful. That's what, that's what fashion has as a power, as a technology. Listen carefully. They create an appearance and they actually, well, arguably they can take an actual pretty woman. They condition you and the so-called ugly girl borrows that from the fashion so that she looks like a version of that beauty that has been sold to you. Let's pretend that that actually is beautiful, right? Generally, there's something about it. She borrows that, so when you now look at her, you don't look at her, you look at the advertisement. Therefore, now you see her beautiful. Technically, you don't see her hair, you see her hair as it's trying to look like this. Technically, you don't see her face. You see her face as it's trying to look like this. Technically, you don't see her. If we say that uh, dressing represents your, your personality, you don't see her personality. You see her look like this. The jeans, how, how the jeans are designed are supposed to create an emphasis on a certain kind of form, figure, and ass. So now, even if you don't have a nice body, the jeans are trying to make you, you look like that. So when you're looking at her, you're not seeing her, you're seeing what's been sold to you as beauty and you may feel that this is a 6 on 10 representative of that beauty, that's good for me. Oh, and that's, not, that's where the scaling goes. But they actually think it's beauty. It's like, no, no. That, listen, I don't want to be that dude, but I'm going to be that dude. Like, your beauty is beauty, okay? It's non-negotiable. But when you're at a place where you're scaling beauty, well, what beauty are you scaling? You're scaling beauty based on what has been presented as the model of beauty. Now, people have been saying this for a long time. Intelligent people, I don't, even feminists have told you that. These are models of beauty. What you see as beautiful today, if you would bring her back in time, you'd mock her. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Mm, mm. I'm like, you look like a psychopath. Like, what, what do I do with that? Like, like, do you like attach a rope to it and fly it in a balloon? What, what, what do I do with this? You'd, you'd laugh at this. Is, this, is, this is, that doesn't look like a woman. That looks like a doll. And even your doll, back in the days, looked like a woman. Right? So what we consider, but, but it's not to remove that beauty is beauty. Real Beauty is beauty. It's not negotiable. It's, it's, it's in nature. But what I'm saying is that those numbers are very much based on that idealized, culturally created beauty. And women can, if they try to play that role. I realized that as I started to study beauty and I unfucked my mind. I, I, I used to take long walks, you know, long ass walks in the city. And I'd spend hours and hours, let's say four or five hours. And on my way home, I'd say, I think today I saw two beautiful girls. I'm telling you, I just, this is summertime. I've seen, I saw thousands of people, men, women. I said, two beautiful girls, and I know when I see them. And if I would tell you which one they were, you'd say, she's not beautiful. No, no, she was actually beautiful. And if you would have to like rate her in the scale of beauty of from one to 10, I'm not going to give her a number, but she, she was not necessarily a 10. Sometimes a 10 is actually beautiful. A 10, how people call a 10. Sometimes she's beautiful. But that's not what I see when I look at beauty. And I don't want to be the dude that says the beauty is inside. I'm like, no, it's not, it's not, not inside either. Um, it's not that. It's, for me, beauty is coherence. 
That's what makes an apple, I don't want to sell apple, beautiful. It's coherent. Every part of the organization is coherent. The expression of it is coherent. Everything is coherent and we can give the, the props to our homeboy Steve Jobs and his obsessive mind and his obsessive vision and his obsession with it has to be coherent. From the top, that means the, the mystical realms from which he, he, he got that data and grounded it all the way to the, it has to be 100% coherent and he worked his ass off and he gave his life and was mocked and failed so many times to like, it, I'm going to follow it through, it's, we're going to get it to be coherent. Shout out to that dude. If there's something that you can learn about, this is the coherence is beauty, okay? Coherence is intelligence, coherence is beauty, coherence is power, coherence is value. So for me, beauty is coherence. So the point is, because we the question was, well, how do you see a beautiful girl when, I don't, I don't remember how you, you, you formulated it. It's like, yeah, well, it, when you're conditioned to see beauty in a specific way, you don't see beauty. You see what you've been brainwashed to see. And that's what fashion, the fashion industry has the capacity to do. It's part of its mandate. It's what culture does. It brainwashes you to see what it wants you to see as good. So culture does what culture does. We can have a conversation about culture another time. I am not a subject of culture. We're all influenced somehow by culture. We live in it, whether I like it or not. I can take what I want from it, but I do not serve culture. Just like I do not serve money, just like I do not serve the system. I'm not against them, but they're there to serve me. So if culture decided that a pink shirt is cool, I'm like, well, I like pink shirts, so thank you for bringing me a pink shirt. Because a couple of years ago, there wasn't on the market. Whereas if I was in India, there's the dude that sells the tissue and you have all the colors and we're missing that color. So I don't give a fuck that you say that pink is in fashion. I don't give a fuck about what you think. Because I don't serve culture. See what I mean? But there are people who serve culture. And therefore culture elevates these people and promotes them because they're spreading the culture and the culture is associated to an agenda. It has an agenda. It is the mouthpiece of a higher mind. Anyways, let's not get lost in all of this. It's cool to talk about, we'll talk about it later. So if we come back to beauty, what we think is beautiful, listen, in the 90s, what a man looked like is very different than what a man looks like today. The image of it. So I'm a kid, I don't know fuck all, and these are the images they're showing me. So here I am, why do I wanna be like the picture? The picture doesn't look like me in any way, shape, or form. The hair is not the same texture as mine. The skin color is not the same as mine. Well, you don't know the size by the look of the picture. The, the, the way they dress and live and the whole... Nothing about this has anything to do with me and my current circumstances. Zero. And here I am trying to look like that. Well, what would make you want to do that? What would make a person... Like, that's a lot of power. That you make a giraffe want to be a gazelle. That's a lot of power. Respect to the power, I ain't got nothing against that. I'm just saying. So why are you, why are you doing this? First, because you have no sense of self, and then now you're being influenced by a very powerful technology that is infusing in your brain, I want you to see this as beauty. Right, and at some point, I'll, 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 that, that's another memorable moment for me. At some point, I was a, I was a, I've said this before, I was a heavy into body, bodybuilding and I was like coming up into my peak at that time and I got myself a gig as a, in, in the fashion industry as a, some kind of like a runway model, a small thing, nothing fancy, but for me it was, it was a moment and I was with the, these people who were like the other people and there was a, these little girls, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, there was these girls, there were little girls for me, okay? who were in the fashion show with me, and they were white girls, and I wasn't accustomed to being in the presence of uh, white Canadian Anglo girls. My surrounding was more eth ethnic, right? So it, it was a little like unusual for me at the time. And I was with them and we were like in, in, that, in, that, uh, in that big uh, commercial store, 
I'll never forget that. And then we passed by and there was an Aqua Di Gio perfume advertisement in the stairwell, like big ass picture of a dude coming out of the pool. I remember that vividly. I remember that the face of the dude, because I used to study that at the time. I used to be totally into fashion and obsessed with it because I thought that it would give me the keys to the success I wanted with women or the success I wanted as a man. I, 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 was, I, got, I, I took the bait, like many people. And I remember the girl's reaction. And her reaction was, she was like, oh my God. Like he's God, literally, the guy who's a homosexual. Like, imagine, <laughs> look at me, right? This is, a, this is a, the guy in the picture is gay. But this has got nothing to do with the fact that he's gay or not, but he's gay. So, and he's effeminate. It's not to say that the dude is not pretty. You could check it out on Google, you'll find it. It's a classic. And they did a couple of ones, but that was the, probably the original version. So the, the picture is aesthetically perfect. The tone, the color tone, everything is perfect. And he's coming out and he's like almost like a girl coming out of the pool. Like you could imagine a girl like with her all licked hair coming out of the pool, but it's a guy, but he's not exactly a guy, but he is a guy. Aqua Di Gio. And now I saw the girl respond. And I remember what it did in me. I'm like, what the fuck? That's what I said, because I'd never, now I'm, I look in retrospect, I, I can, I understand what, it's, it's pretty, right? The whole advertisement in three, but in, at the time, I'm like, you find that dude pretty? But the response, like, it's a jubilation, right? And, and in my mind, I'm like, how the fuck am I going to look like that? How, I cannot make, I can, like, that, like... All this, like, what the fuck, right? That's the power of culture. And that's, that shows you to which extent when you, you're not anchored in the knowledge of self, and you don't, you're not anchored in what genuine beauty is or organic beauty is. You have no sense of that. So anything goes, and, now, and here I am now. I had, like, nice, long, uh, curly hair. I'm, like, trying to, like, straighten my fucking hair so I could look like a white dude. Well, not even a white dude, a white gay dude coming out of the pool. <laughs> right? So some people may find this funny. You don't realize to which extent you're influenced. And if you're anti-culture, you're just as much as influenced as culture, just against it. So you're just another pawn in the game. Because there's clothes for the anti-culture people. So that's what I'm trying to say. So your sense of beauty, your sense of aesthetic, your sense of everything gets confused. And you don't know what's what anymore. Your brain has been hacked into. So when you see a girl, it's not that you find her pretty. It's that you've been conditioned to respond to what she looks like in a way that's sexual. And that you think now, because beauty creates movement. They've hacked in and cheated that by hacking into your nervous system and hacking into your sexual energy and create some kind of movement that you don't understand exactly where it's coming from. And now you, that, that's, that, that's beautiful. I'm affected by it. Beauty affects you. Real beauty affects everyone. That's, it's a power. It's a power just like knowledge. When there's genuine beauty, it just makes everything stop. It commands silence. That's power, dude. How many things in life commands silence? Like you have the most chattering mind in the universe. You try to meditate for 50,000 lives and we just bring you beauty and instantly everything stops in your brain and you're just like this. Think about it. You're like the biggest Buddhist on top of I don't know which one, which mountain. And for thousands of lives, you can't stop your mind. And you write like the books of books on saying how the mind, right? And we just bring you beauty and instantly samadhi is there. Or is it? Anyway, the point of what I'm trying to say is that we're conditioned to see beauty in a particular way. And we don't realize that. And when you start to understand it, you're suffering because of you associate yourself to these standards. And you try to reach those standards. And even, even if you're able to reach them. So it's not... I never looked like the dude, but I almost got there. I was like at least in the top 20%. So if you, on a good day, I may be at 90%. On your average day, I'm like 81, 85, 83. If I make a super effort, maybe I'll be 92. But there's a fucking dude who's like 98 without even trying. 
It doesn't matter at what level I got. With yourself, you're not happy because with yourself, when you look at yourself in the mirror, even though if you like angle yourself and you look at your, just your eyes and you tap into that part of your room like, yeah, I look good, right? Do you feel beautiful? No. Probably not. I'm talking about beautiful. And then people will say, well, that's called inner beauty and outer beauty. There's only one beauty, bro. You're beautiful, you're not. I can see when something is pretty from the outside, but I don't find it beautiful. I find it aggressive because it's incoherent, it's a con. In the world of witchcraft, beauty is used as a spell to steal. We're not getting into that. So all I'm trying to say is, so when you realize that you, when you're trying to achieve, uh, because beauty is a divine, is divine and it's a gift and everybody has access to it at whatever degree. So when you decide to cultivate beauty and you try to repeat certain images that you've seen and you, you, you never discover your beauty, so you get sad because you can't feel, you don't feel good with yourself. Right? And at some point when you get sick and tired of that, you're like, fuck it, I need to discover beauty. And then you have to now go, go through a journey to unfuck yourself, like throw those things out. They need to be... So that you can get deeper into your nervous system and discover what it, what it is and who you are. And then when those pieces come together, there's a form of coherence and beauty is the byproduct. Now, it may not be the beauty that they sell you on TV, but beauty is beauty, like I tell you. And you may not be like five foot ten as a woman and have the nice, long, perfect... Le beauty is beauty. Form is form. It's not I'm blind to it, right? It's like, no, but she's beautiful. I'm telling you, try it for yourself. And then when I'm with a woman... Sure, beautiful ass is beautiful ass. It's a form. I can, like, come on, dude. Like, a nice car is a nice car, right? We, I'm, not, I'm not trying to remove that. I'm trying to say that that's not, that's just the surface. Beauty is from inside out. It's an essence. It's not just a form. That's what makes a Mac computer, in my humble opinion, not that I want to sell Mac, I don't give a fuck about Mac, and I don't own stocks in Apple. What I'm trying to tell you is like, from the deep piss part of the Mac, there's beauty. And it expresses itself all the way into its, in, the, in the box that you unwrap, and, how, and the plastic wrapper, the whole thing. But we cannot deny the, the genius of the machine and the way it's constructed. Come on, right? Do you see what I'm trying to say? So beauty is an essence. And we can say it's the essence of the soul. But I don't want to talk about soul because if I say the word soul, I have to say, well, what is soul? And I'm not in the mood for that. But it comes from the deepest essence of yourself. And that that is activated, then it could start to permeate and penetrate and pass through the different layers of your being all the way to the surface, all the way to, well, how you walk and how you dress and your shoes and your hair. So again, what do people try to do? This is the world we live in. We spoke about money before. I said money is what? It's attention, energy, and time. And it's the byproduct of work, capital W. And it is said work is prayer. Once upon a time, everybody knew this. Work is prayer. Now, when you work at Starbucks, it ain't work with a capital W. You a slave. That's another subject. And it's not a prayer. You could try to make it into prayer, I could teach you how, but that's another thing. Right? So, here's what I'm trying to say. They're trying to steal your value, which is an essence that is expressed through material, through your body, through an, all the way to an action. And they just want to take the byproduct. Same goes for beauty. Beauty is something, some people have it in... It's easy, but it's just the surface. No, it's an essence, and that essence has to be cultivated and then expressed all the way through. So what do we do in our modern world? Nah, I just want the surface. I don't care about the essence. I don't care about coherence. I, I don't care that it has to permeate every strata of my being. Nah, all I care about is that it looks beautiful. And if they can show me how to do it, 
I can arrange like this, I can do it like this, I could put it like this, then it looks beautiful. So there we go. Now I don't have to put in the work, attention, investment of time, and energy to activate or unlock the essence of beauty and learn the art forms, because there's multiple art forms of the expression of beauty. Expression, not beauty, the expression of is not beauty itself. Expre beauty is beauty. Expression of beauty is the expression, it's an art form. How to express beauty. First you have to have beauty to express it, right? So they want to hack into that and then they stay at the surface and all they're trying to do is cheat. And it's become a culture of that. So a couple of years ago, Botox didn't exist. Once upon a time, buttocks, buttocks didn't exist. And I saw this happen. I saw it, it like transform. And they started to be these women who started to have, create a look, which is the buttocks look. It, it's like, there's like a deformation. It's odd, right? It's it, like the face become, looks very um, unusual. I started to notice that that weird face started to become a new face in the culture. It started to become like part of the ethos. I'm like, but this is an ugly ass face. That's like the form, like I don't understand, right? But now, now, now this is like, it's become associated to beauty. I'm like, how could this ever be beautiful? This is like the form, right? What I'm trying to tell you is that they're trying to hack at beauty. Like they're trying to hack at everything. They try to cheat, but you can't. And even if you succeed, God bless you if you do, because some people are good at the game. Some people are awesome at the game. I, you're good at the game, I respect you. That means you know it's a game and you're good at it. God bless you. What matters is that, well, do you feel beautiful? Right? That's all that matters at the end of the day. And when you don't feel beautiful, there's a part of you that wants to always hide something. And that's not to say that you shouldn't make an effort and you can't polish yourself or uh, adjust yourself or like, I have a, like, look at my, that's a style of hair, that's my hairstyle, right? It doesn't mean that there's not an effort. I told you there's an art form to it. But it's from the essence. And when you feel not beautiful, it's because something's not, that essence is not expressing itself or it's having a hard time expressing itself through certain layers. And it's for you to decide if you want to serve the goddess of beauty. I'm going to make the effort to allow that beauty to express itself. Right? And beauty has different seasons also. And that's another thing people don't understand. There's the beauty of a baby, there's the beauty of a, a budding child, there's the beauty of a t young teenager, there's the beauty of a older teenager, there's the beauty of in your 20s, there's the beauty of your 30s, there's the beauty of your 40s, there's beauties. So when the beauties of your 60s, 70s, the old man I'm talking about, he was 74 or 5 when I met him. He looked like God to me. He's like the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. That's an old dude with a white beard long all the way here. He looked so beautiful. Like so beautiful. Then I saw pictures of him when he was young. He also looked beautiful. But I'm like, I don't know which one is beautiful, more beautiful. Well, the young version is cool because it's like I could kind of relate to it. But you're like, he's not less beautiful. He's just differently beautiful. In fact... To a certain degree, it's more beautiful because there was more wisdom, more knowledge, more power. But let's just keep it simple. It's like, well, the young version looked beautiful, but it's young. And that's like, that's like the super OG version. It's like, whoa, it's like you just don't talk. You just like... The other one, you could kind of like pull a joke. So what I'm trying to say is that our understanding of beauty is so shallow that it, it's, it looks like something and that can never change. And everybody's stuck in that. But you're, it's impossible because by the nature of things, you're gonna, you have youth, you reach a certain peak, and then, well, I don't want to go like this, but it's time. Time goes, right? Youth wanes. Yeah, but when youth wanes, it gives way to another form of energy, which is also beautiful. But our modern world doesn't care about any of this. It only cares about the facade and a certain kind of facade, and everybody's trying to emulate that facade, and I find it fucking ugly. 
Because it's, it's a hypo hypocrisy. It's a, it's, it's a lie. It's a sham. You're looking at the person and the hypocrisy is making them ugly. The incoherence makes it ugly. Incoherence for me is ugly. When I see a person and the way they're dressed is incoherent, it fucking bothers me. I'm like, this is ugly. Make an effort. Why are you intentionally ugly? They try to make it cool, that's a style. I'm like, that's not a style, that's ugly. It's incoherent. I'm staying at the surface, right? It, it, it's, it's because it's violent to the eyes. Everything in nature is coherent. Even when something is quote unquote considered ugly, let's say some kind of like disgusting insect, if you really look at it, it's not ugly at all. It's, it's, it's gorgeous and it's brilliant. It's just it's like a little creepy. It makes you feel a little uneasy. But it's not ugly at all. Even when it's like weird eyes and eight eyes, and it's, 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 if you really zoom out and you look at it, it's like, wow, it's marvelous. It's perfectly coherent. It's just, it makes you feel uneasy. I don't mind to feel uneasy, right? That's, that's fine. What I'm trying to say is like, it's incoherent, so it's ugly. It's fake. And generally, and sometimes that person knows that they're incoherent, so they're, it, they're, it, something even more is added, which makes them all the more just like, right? Anyways, all this to say, what I, was, what, what I wanted to say is like, well, when I'm with a woman, I look at her beauty. The essence. And it doesn't mean that I'm not enjoying the surface beauty. But my interest is the essence. Because that's where all the juice is. How much juice do you get from an ass? I don't know. I love ass, but like it's just an ass. Like at the end of the day, should we do anatomy and talk about the different muscles composing the, the ass? It's just an ass. There's no juice in it. It's like loving an orange for the pulp. Right? So what makes it interest, what makes a woman beautiful, in my opinion, the man also, but it's like, it's, it's the essence, the essence of beauty. And then you can see that in her. Yeah, but you have to have the eyes to see it. And if you're superficial, that means you don't know what beauty is, you can't see it in her. Then you treat her as an object, or you project on her the, your, fan, your fantasies, and then you, you get stimulated by whatever parts of her look like the picture. So you're using her as a, Masturbation prop. I got no, 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 whatever, if that works for you and you enjoy it, but I can assure you, if she's any sane, she's not enjoying herself because she feels, well, she's being used. Yeah, she is. She's being used by culture and by you, and she's using herself also. But let's put that aside. So, how can you have a form of intimacy with a person if you can't see beauty? Well, that's what I'm trying to say. So you, need a, you need an education in beauty. And technically, you don't need an education. You need, you need a deconditioning of fake beauty and ugliness, which is celebrated in our society, so that the essence of beauty can reemerge and that we can live in a world of beauty. And I assure you, yeah, there are people who are quote unquote genetically uh, have gifts. I'm like, yeah, okay. God bless them. I have who will deny the beauty of beauty, right? Certainly not me. But that's not that's an aspect of beauty. And if that aspect is not harmonized with the essence of beauty, it becomes ugly and it becomes a weapon and it becomes like just get the fuck out of my way. You're just violent. You're you're stealing my attention. I don't want, why are you stealing my attention? And, and in fact, the people who, who fancy ugliness are smart enough to understand that in their own ways. Like, if I'm ugly, it's going to steal your attention. Just like the pretty girl. Right? You're not going to have a choice but to pay attention to me because I'm so fucking ugly. The incoherence is so grave that you're going to be like, wow, that's, it steals your attention. It's a form of violence. Because it's incoherent. Remember what I said. Real beauty brings silence. And if it's pure, it also awakens reverence and respect. I don't want to say adoration, but a form of like it's, it's God. It's an aspect, beauty is an aspect of God. 
So back in the days, and still to a certain degree today, people understood this, so that's why they spent so much time to cultivate beauty and because it gives you divine power. In a way. But it was weaponized to steal people's attention so that they worship you, instead of worshiping the one who's worthy of worship. Okay, enough about that.